Well, hi. In this video, I'm going to explain what happens to time when we die, when we pass over. And of course, this is my way of seeing this and how it works. And so it's not a universal truth, but maybe this will resonate with you. Maybe this information, the way I'm explaining it, might be in harmony with you in some way. So watch the video and find out. I'm going to switch now to my presentation. I'm going to use some slides and some examples to illustrate my point. Okay, so let's now just switch to the presentation. So here we go. You know, people with near-death experiences, they report that time ceases to exist when they die, when they pass over. Is this true? If so, how does it really work? Well, if there is no time, how can they be conscious, since consciousness requires time to exist? Please see my Paradox of Creation video for more information regarding this specific topic about consciousness needing time to exist. And you'll find a link below this video. So let's now move on and take a closer look at how it's possible for time to stop when we die. So I'm going to explain this by using information from my book, The Paradox of Creation. And I wrote this book after spending several months emailing with a man called Steve Berg from the UK. 25 years ago, we had this incredible experience where he had this expansion of consciousness and he has this great way of looking at creation and he gave me some incredible ways of seeing creation with great examples. So he helped me expand my consciousness and then I wrote the book. So this example I'm going to use is from the book. You know, our physical reality has three dimensions of space. Length, width and height or depth. So you can move around in space in our 3D world. You can walk in nature, you can walk in cities, you can just walk around and you're in a 3D space. And we have three dimensions of time, you know, past, present and future, but we can really only experience one dimension, the present moment, the now moment. So you're always stuck in the present now moment. So let's illustrate space and time by using a river. And this is the river example I'm using in my book. So let's see, this is the river of life, okay? And the river has three dimensions. It has a length and a width and a depth. So this is the space element, okay? And then we have time and the water is time. The water in the river is time. And in the river, there is a current. And a current, well, a current can mean a body of water moving in a definite direction like a stream. But it can also mean now, you know, belonging to the present time, the current moment. So it has more than one meaning. So there is a current in the river and current also mean now, the present moment. So when you're born into this earth, you're born into the river of life. And then you move along in the river and you drag along by the, by the current. So you have no, you know, have, you cannot dictate your own pace. You're always stuck in the current moment because you're dragged along by the current and then as you move down the down the river one day you're going to reach a point where you're going to die and pass over okay so let's start, say now that you're you're floating around in this river and the, the current is so strong so you cannot swim upstream and you cannot force your speed to increase so you can f go fa faster down the river, okay? So you're always stuck in the current moment, the present moment. Because of the current, you're always stuck in the present moment. You cannot do anything about that. And this is how we experience life on Earth. Let's say now, further down the river, there is a cottage. So for you, that would be the future. And let's say there's a certain speed in the river. The current has a certain speed. So for you, it will take about one day to reach this cottage, okay? So that means that's tomorrow, and for you, you're in today. So you're in the current moment, which is today. And then tomorrow, you have reached the cottage. So that will be today for you. So you're in the, always in the current moment because you drag along by the current. So where you were yesterday, that's the past. That's one day up the river, so that's yesterday, okay? And so you keep moving down the river, so, and then every place you've been is now the past, and one day, you're going to die. You're going to be in your current moment, drag along by the current, and all of a sudden you die. So what happens when you die? What happens is this. The river floats into the ocean. It merges with the ocean. 
So what is the ocean? Well, the ocean is this sea of energy, a sea of consciousness. It's all that is. A multidimensional sea. It's the non-space that keeps the space together. It's the glue and it's connected to everything. So what happens to the current in the river when it merges with the ocean? Well, it fades away. So you're not being dragged along by the current anymore. There is no current. So you are now in the ocean. So the blue screen you see now is all the ocean. And the river, the water in the river, and the river is merging with the ocean, becoming part of the ocean. So you are now part of the ocean. So you are in this sea of energy and in this sea of everything. And you can hear all thoughts and you can feel all feelings because the ocean is connected to everything. Also the river. And you're in it. You're connected to absolutely everything because everything is consciousness. And consciousness is saturating the whole universe. So now you are in contact with everything okay so now you have access to what we call the past and the future because now because the water in, in in the ocean is also the water in the river and it's connected to everything and you have access to the past and the future so the river is always there you know up river down river the cottage everything at the same time but when you were on earth and floating in the river you could only experience the present moment step by step but when the the current goes away and fades away and go into the ocean it becomes part of the ocean you become part of the ocean and it seems still it's like there is no more current there's no force dragging you anymore and it feels like time stopped and you connected to everything but time didn't disappear it's just that the current is no longer dragging you along there is still time in the sense that you're connected to everything and you can move around in time. So you are now connected to everything that the ocean is connected to. So linear time as we experience it here on earth is really an illusion as Einstein also discovered. So you might see this, this river as this linear timeline. You're always in the present moment, dragged along by the present moment. So he said that the dividing line between past, present and future is an illusion. So this timeline, the river is really an illusion. And in 1905, Einstein published his theory of relativity in which he linked space and time. He said that space and time were not actually separate and he placed them together in one dynamic unit, which he called space time. But if space time is a reality, then time space must also be a reality. And time-space is the opposite of space-time. And yes, it is, according to this guy, Dewey Larson, who was an American engineer and the originator of the reciprocal system of theory. This is a comprehensive theoretical framework capable of explaining all physical phenomena from subatomic sub particles to galactic clusters. And he said, in this realm of physical theory, space and time are simply the two reciprocal aspects of the soul constituent of the universe, which is motion. Everything is moving and space and time are two reciprocal aspects of this. So we observe space as being three-dimensional, but space does not exist without time. Therefore, time must be three-dimensional as well. So time-space is the inverse or opposite of space-time. So on Earth, we're in the river. So we experience space-time. That is three dimensions of space, you know, the river itself. And the water is time. So we cannot really move around upriver or downriver. We're stuck in this one dimension. Time is constant. You cannot move around in time. This is the earth way of living, okay? But when you pass over, you go to the other side. Then this turns into time-space. And all of a sudden, you can move around in time because now you have access to the past and the future because everything is really now. So what we call the past and the future is really always there in the present moment. And this is the real reality, so to speak. This is how it really is. So the river and earth and what we experience in this universe is really the illusion. So space is really one dimensional because there's only one sea of energy, one you know, one, uh, one consciousness that's saturating everything. 
It's like, you know, the non-space holding the space together. It's everything and it's really just one sea of energy or one sea of consciousness. So it's one dimensional. So in this reality, space is fixed and you can move about in time because you are connected to everything in the, 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 the multidimensional sea. Okay, so time space is the inverse or opposite of space time. So in our daily lives, we can move around in space while time is constant. So this is the space time element. So we experience time as linear, a linear phenomenon and we have no control over it. We're dragged along by the current, by the present moment, like in the river example. So when the term time space is used, it refers to the metaphysical universe, you know, the other side. So people with near-death experiences of the other side say they went through a life review where they saw all their lives. They had the experience of all lifetime as if all of them were occurring at the same time. Yes, because they, they are now in the ocean connected to everything, so there is no really no past and no future. So they say they felt all feelings, they could hear all thoughts because they were in the ocean connected to everything. And this is what you know, people with near-death experiences tell you. I've been interviewing many people with near-death experiences and they say this, I felt connected to everything. I felt this, that, that time stood still. Yes, because it's only the present moment, but it's not really that time disappeared. It's just that they went from space time to time space. So being in the ocean would feel like time stopping, ceasing to exist, but it doesn't. It's just a transformation from space time to time space, from the river to the ocean, from earth to the other side. So the current stops when you move into time space like people with near-death experiences do, so they can experience what we call the past and the future. So anyone else who is capable of connecting to the other side, you know, to the time space reality, will also be able to experience the past and the future, to see the future. This explains why prophets, fortune tellers, clairvoyants, the Mayans and other indigenous people could see the future. They were able to tune into the time space reality by meditating or taking substances that stimulate the pineal gland. So here you have it, this is it. Here on earth we have space time, three dimensional space, one dimensional time, time is constant. And then when you die or when you, when you, you know, tune into the other side, then you experience the, the, the inverted time space reality where you can move around in time. And we do this every night. When we dream, we move around. We just jump into different time zones when we dream. And then space is really constant. It's one sea of energy or one sea of consciousness. So that's why I used the river example because I thought it was a nice way of explaining how we go from space time, from the river example and the linear time and then merge into the ocean where everything seems still and we're connected to everything. So I hope you liked this video and my explanation. And if you didn't watch this video on my blog, please feel free to check out my blog at onemind1energy.com forward slash blog as I'm posting new articles and videos on a regular basis. And you can also sign up for a blog alert and be notified when, when new articles and videos go live. So just click on the blog alert banner below the posts or the banner in the right hand column. Thank you for watching.